Well, hey guys, what's new? It's 7 Demo 7. I'm here at my local field. Don't get too many meadows like this uh, around too often, so um, it's kind of a luxury. Uh, anyway, I'm going to fly my Bix 3 today. And um, I did a maiden flight with it yesterday. Not a maiden maiden flight, but as you can see, I have a couple of add-ons here. I have number one, uh, this is my GPS unit for my Cyclops Storm. And I hope you guys can see that. That's inside there. I did a, a little maiden, like I said, not really a maiden, but, um, but the first time I've ever tried the Cyclops Storm. And it uh, worked first time perfectly. Had a little bit of a wind, and I, we have some wind this morning, so I'm going to try it out one more time with some FPV. Basically, it has a manual mode, which is actually no assisting whatsoever from the flight controller. Uh, then it also has a PA mode, which stands for Pilot Assist and that helps you stabilize your flight uh, and then it has a return to home mode which you click the button and sure enough it flies back to you uh, and basically it'll circle about 90 feet above my head um, so that's going to be pretty interesting i'm going to see um, how that works uh, first line of sight and then i'll probably uh, try some um, some uh, fpv just short range fpv obviously I'm not in a big field here um, it actually it is quite big but you know, testing some of the stuff, you know, you don't want to go too far right away. You know, it, it's always, with FPV, it's always baby steps. You test your equipment uh, and then go a little bit further, a little bit further. Um, but you always want to be safe, which is why we come to a place like this in this really cool field. Anyway, I'll stop talking now and we'll get you guys on the plane. Because of the way I have my situation set up here, I've got a little bit of weight in the tail because I put a carbon fiber boom inside the tail. I have to run both of my 2200s up in the nose of the Vixler just like this, okay? Just to show you. Here's a funny story for you guys. I'm about to crash here. Um, I was buddy boxing a good friend of mine yesterday and we ended up having to reverse some switches on my radio because we had to switch radios. Anyway, um, needless to say, those switches were not put back into place. Uh, it was a mistake I made before taking off. I usually always, always do a control surface te check no matter what. And probably because I was filming, I just got a little lackadaisical. I did not check it. So uh, it's a good lesson to learn. So check your surfaces. I know, dude. What's up, man? Out of the blue, one of my friends shows up. Pretty cool. All right, man. You have fun. <laughs> you too. Good to see you again. Thanks for stopping, man. Get those planes out, man. I want to see them. All right, guys. Here we go for our flight. Um, I stayed up in the air for about 27 minutes or so. And I'm going to show you um, what you see in the heads-up display in just a moment. Not from my DVR, but just from a screenshot uh, from my computer. Uh, and what you're going to see is basically a fighter mode, a simple mode, and, uh, and no mode, which basically shows no heads-up display, which is really nice if you're, doing, if you're trying to follow someone. Um, I picked up that tip from BMS Web. But here is the fighter mode. It gives you a lot of information. Basically, this one has the most information on the screen that can possibly you can possibly have. And what it doesn't show also is the artificial horizontal um, uh, horizon. Excuse me. Um, so it shows speed, altitude, um, your and your battery voltage settings, which are probably the most important things. Also, the the direction home as far as the little uh, line indicator above the home navigation menu. Um, I will be going into return to home in just a, a few minutes where and I actually fly over these buildings over here um, and I didn't not intentionally but that's because it was being flown by itself but next time I'll, I'll get further out into the field here so it doesn't fly over the buildings um, so right about over here I think is when I start going into return to home as it flies towards these buildings like I said okay here is the simpler version uh, the second mode which clears up the center of your screen a little bit and it condenses a lot of that information down into the lower one third of the screen. Uh, still has, I think, almost all the same information. I forget what it forgets, but um, it keeps a, a pretty much the entire heads up display, uh, which, is, which is really nice. So, flight mode PA, the, which is. Um, 
which is pilot assist, basically it allows you to have a heading lock and also an altitude lock. So this is very important for me. I wear eyeglasses typically. I try not to wear my contacts too much, but when I wear eyeglasses, all in one motion, I need to pull off my glasses, pop my goggles on, or in, in reverse. Um, and that's really hard to do if you're trying to control a plane at the same time. I do have a small monitor I can look at um, that I can see without my glasses, but what's really nice about this is I can set the plane into a heading, uh, let go of the controls, which is almost unheard of when you're actually flying airplanes. Um, I can take my time put my glasses on or take my glasses off, pop my goggles on, adjust them a little bit and so they're nice and comfortable. That's something I've never um, had the opportunity to do while flying an airplane. It's always been rip the goggles off, you know, poke your eye out as you're trying to put your eyeglasses on. So anyway, that is the end of this flight here. I think I'm going to land in just a second. So um, like I said, this went on for about 27 minutes. I'm not going to bore you guys with a 27-minute flight while I'm narrating because I respect you guys too much. All right, guys. Hey, this thing is flying really good. So um, I uh, put it into uh, return to home mode, which you'll see on the video from the camera here. Um, put it into return to home mode, and it flew around in a nice circle above my head. About about 90 feet is what I have it set to. Uh, that's completely completely controllable. All right. Speaking of looking at screens, it says I've got lots of power left. So that's good. Okay guys, that was a quick little um, a preview of the OSD system that I put into my Pixel 3. I will be doing a quick um, a, a hookup video on how I hooked up this up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull everything out for you guys, show you each connection that I made, and then I'll put the, everything back in the airplane and we'll test everything as well. So I'll talk to you guys soon. Uh, until next video, thanks for watching everyone. Please hit that subscribe button and, and also the like button. I appreciate it and I'll talk to you later. Bye.